She admits to marrying a man that didn't like her, then wondered why it failed. It doesn't make any sense. This one's going to be interesting and prove a lot of points. Most men benefit from marriage. I remember when I reached a point in my marriage, I am now divorced, where I was like, wow, my husband benefits so much from having me in his life. Like, literally, I handled the finances. Whenever we traveled, I did all the travel arrangements. I did all the planning. I did all the grocery shopping. I didn't really do the cooking, but I did pretty much all of the cleaning. And I did any type of like social organization or, you know, if, if one of the people in our family like had a birthday, like I would shop for it. If we were going to a holiday at, you know, his family's house, um, I would make sure that we were bringing something. Like I did everything for this man. Aww. An amazing woman. Okay, let me stop her there. Note everything she's just said. I did ev ev everything for this man. She did pretty much everything for this man. Everything. Everything. So far, we have an idea he's probably a lazy dude who doesn't do much. He doesn't help her around the house. Disgusting. And probably doesn't help her in life that much at all. She married him. She married him. She's crazy. But wait, we're going to let her finish waffling as to how bad he is. And then I'm going to prove my point in her next video. And there came a point in my marriage where I was like, wow, this man benefits so, 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 so much from marriage. Yep. But what do cool. I benefit from? Nothing. And when I stepped back and I really looked at that, I was like, I am not benefiting very much from this marriage. And so I started to ask him for more. And that's when I realized how replaceable women are because instead of him wanting to do the work how replaceable women are or how replaceable you were to him damn because if a man comes across a woman he actually loves and cares for and doesn't want to lose yeah she becomes almost impossible to replace so i'm talking too much i forgot i'm a misogynist and what they don't understand they fear apparently work and actually like work to help the marriage move forward and for us to both be equal partners okay. um there was a lot of resistance where he was like like I think I could I could feel and this is my projection that he was like why don't I just go you know like find someone or I think because he was so religious <laughs> he's telling her to go get another man that will put up with your crap basically Bruh. and that's not even good him saying that is not good this man does not care about the woman and it's not me saying it for him it wasn't why don't I go find someone it was like why well, should I pick someone who was just like less uh asked less of me and eventually he did step up a bit and really helped with other things but again it was him helping me it wasn't him doing it it was always me being like you know here's what needs to be done can you please do it and he'll be like tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it and you know he would to his credit do it but that was still the emotional labor that I had to do of telling him what needed to be done okay let me stop her there horrible man isn't he? he's a very horrible man you think to yourself but why how can such a lovely woman be treated like crap why is she letting herself be treated like crap she's a lovely woman isn't she a very attentive caring wife doing everything for the man why would she allow herself to be treated like crap it doesn't make any sense well this is why this is why then who puts all of their love onto somebody who is not reciprocating so many people ask me why did you stay in a marriage for nine years when it was very clear that that man did not like you okay let me stop her there before she continues get your popcorn remember he was a horrible man get your popcorn and enjoy the next few words this woman says first of all that's not a very helpful question to ask someone um but i see where you're coming from and second of all i grew up in a family where it was normal that i was trying to convince someone and people who are supposed to automatically love you to love me. And so it felt safe to my nervous system that I didn't know where I stood with the, the person I was married to. I didn't know that I thought that I had to prove my love and I had to earn their love because that's what I grew up in. That felt safe to my nervous system. What? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. Breathe, breathe. Now I'm sorry. That man's bad, he's not good, he's not a helpful man. It does not matter how bad he is. By nature, she'd want a man that is bad for her. Gotcha. She's telling you because of her trauma, I'm not saying any of it's good, but she's telling you a good man would have not been good for her anyway. Nope. She's literally telling you, oh, let me breathe. I'm trying to compose myself to make these points because it's just so frustrating when you hear women come on the internet, make these dumb points when you think to yourself, well, I'm sure all men can't be like that. That's impossible. I'm not like that. Nope. Where did they find these men? Where can these women find these men that are like this? Of course they would. They're looking for them. Yeah. 
They are looking for them. But you know what? You know what? Let me let her finish. Again, based on her trauma. That we can understand. I'm not saying any of that's good. I'm making a point as a man. When men are being roasted and destroyed every single day when it's like it's not their fault. The choosers are choosing bad themselves. Here's a really good example of the difference between life coaching and therapy. Because the other day I was talking to my life coach about how, you know, I'm going to have to enter the dating world someday. And that feels so scary. That feels so unsafe to my nervous system because I have this fundamental belief that I still struggle with that. I'm not deserving of a good partner. Oh my god. Did you hear what she just said? I'm not deserving of a good partner. Did you hear what she just said? She's of the fundamental belief she doesn't deserve a good partner. Now, this point here, this woman would overlook any man that's good or decent because she doesn't believe she deserves that. This is not new, it's not rare. This is so many modern women. To this day! This love of chasing a man's affection when he clearly doesn't want her. But because they rap and project so much crap onto men, they'd run after certain men who don't give an F, then blame all of us as men for not just being decent men. That is bullshit. A lot of these women are seeking shitty men on purpose, then tarnishing all of us with that brush. For me personally, this is the BS these women on the internet are saying that like, gets on my fucking nerves. You're acknowledging you're choosing shit. Yeah. This is nothing to do with men in general. It's to do with you and your shitty choices. I'm not deserving of a good partner and I wouldn't know how to act and I wouldn't trust their intentions and I'm skeptical when people are nice to me like romantically wow. because they always have an agenda. You know when you hear some women say they don't like nice guys? Well, it's not because of the weirdness. It's because he actually likes her and sees her as a human being. He may actually, you know, start to develop some feelings and care about her. And that gives a lot of women the ick. You know, as a young man, I had to learn to understand this, that it actually bothers some women if you actually like them. The, the ick. ick. As a young man, that messed me up. I didn't understand it. How does that make sense? I, I like you. I want to be with you. Disgusting. I want to be around you. What what's the problem? A little bit crazy, a little bit bad. As a grown man now, I understand the BS, the trauma behind it. I refer to them as Jennies. I get it. As a young man... <laughs> I could not get this answer anywhere. And people would act as if there's something wrong with you when you know for a fact, no, this is just weird. I like this chick, but she doesn't believe me that I like her. She's like, oh, I don't believe you. What? I don't believe you. Are you joking? No, I just don't believe you. Why, why would you? Let me breathe. A lot of men, a lot of men are shit men. Admittedly, a lot of men, I'd admit that all day, a lot of men are crap men. However, we need to make sure every time we talk about these crap men, we acknowledge that a lot of women need these men to chase to seek love and validation from these men because of their own traumas and their past and history. This is not to do with all men being crap and bad, horrific, abusive men. A lot of women, be careful what I say, based on like what this woman said, being careful what I say, a lot of these women will seek out violent men who would traumatize them even more. That's fucking ridiculous. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not giving that clarification. This is not advice. I'm making this simple fucking point. You chase it in pursuit of it because you want that to validate you. That is not men's problem. That's your problem. That's a woman, women's problem. Outstanding. Thank you. And so me and my life coach were talking about that and we were talking about where that belief comes from and how to let that go and how to release that. And it was really helpful. But then I talked to my therapist the next day and they were like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a symptom of complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And I was like, oh, so for me, I know that it feels safe in my nervous system to try to earn love from someone. And when they're not showing love, that feels safe to me because I know how to navigate that. And I know how to adapt myself to make myself more lovable. Okay, I get her point. That makes perfect sense. But my point is, why in the first video was she trashing her husband? I mean, that's a husband you'd have. Based on everything you've just said, you wouldn't have a good husband. You wouldn't have a husband that could manage finances, take care of the house and you better. Because that doesn't make sense to you. You don't feel safe in that. Am I making sense? I hope I am. What doesn't feel safe is when people are kind to me, oh when they're God. interested in me, when they oh, care God. about what I have to say. Did you hear everything she just said? Let me repeat that again. I have to repeat that. I'm sorry. Again. In love. That feels safe to me because I know how to navigate that and I know how to adapt myself to make myself more lovable. What doesn't feel safe is when people are kind to me, when they're interested in me, when they care about what I have to say, when they're engaging with me. I'm like, whoa. What's your agenda? Did you hear everything she just said? You know, as men, there aren't anything like some of these crap men women talk about. It's like, how do you get in that situation? Where did you find him? Where are they finding these men? They're seeking these men. Or well, these men are seeking them and they're crumbling to these men or they're, that's oh, he, him or oh, the chemistry, which is actually trauma-based. It's not anything real. 
Oh my God. And this is how a lot of women, by using words, will make a lot of men look like absolute demons. Men that are kind to her, listen to her, and talk back to her properly like she's a human being, freak her out. What? what I have to say when they're engaging with me, I'm like, whoa, what's your agenda? Because I'm afraid that at any minute the shoe is going to drop, the punch is going to come, something's going to happen. That would come from a man that doesn't care about you, the exact man you're seeking. That wouldn't come from a man that actually wants to engage with you. Oh, wow, 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 wow. And so the best way that I can avoid that is by working through those mindsets and that trauma that I have that's stored in my body of it is not safe to feel and to accept love from people. And before we continue, this is nothing against this woman personally. This is nothing against her. I'm using her as an example of so many women. Thank you. It's disturbing as fuck, but thank you. But I realized that there was this pattern that I was searching for unconsciously, that love from people who really didn't have any ability themselves to give it. And so I haven't not. dated since my divorce at all. And I'm terrified to date. So <laughs> that's like not even on my radar right now. But I just think it's really good to have these types of discussions where it's understanding that some of these patterns that we had in childhood are being carried over into our adulthood and they're still affecting us today and so being able to work through those and to confront those are really hard but it's going to be really worth it i understand women go through a lot of crap every single day in relationships marriages and whatever but when women don't admit that a lot of them are in those situations because they chose it that's your shitty choices that's not men have an honest day did everything for this man. 